In the liturgy, we say before pronouncing the Our Father that it's a prayer that we dare to say. It's we dare to say, uh, we dare to call God Father. And I was rec recently explained that I think a study done on that, the Abba, it, I always had understood it, it was like kind of like a daddy, you know, like a baby saying Abba, like if it was his first word. It was actually how I was taught how the Abba would be more labial, or like when children say their dad's name, Papa, Dad, it's more explosive and outward, which is also kind of, um, in a way, symbolic to what a father does. A father, he kind of he kind of pushes his son out, and he's and he's and he's kind of behind him to go, you know, like hunt and to like to leave. Whereas the the mom is more inward, like mom. Mama, Emma, like that's all like going inwards with the lips, which is also kind of symbolic of a mom who's kind of taking them in. That was how I learned, anyways. But um, I think apparently, from what I was explained, the studies on Naba, it would be more something that uh, a son would say to his father, but it's more kind of like in a, 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 a situation or an environment where there's. There's a lot of trust. I think an equivalent would be kind of like how sometimes you see p kids call their dad, like I hear they'd say like the old fella in, in Irish, in Ireland, say like the old fellow or the old man. You wouldn't really say that to somebody else's dad or, you know, it's kind of more like between father and son where there's a bit more of trust and, you know, there's more relationship. So Abba would be kind of like between father and son. It's a, it is a tender term. It is, you know, like, between the father and the son, whereas in public, I think it would be more like, you know, there's another word for father. But, I mean, it's still, we're daring to call dad father at the end of the day, so, and daddy as well. I don't think you can take away dad, maybe even sometimes. I know, I do know people who are even a bit older that still say daddy. The, the essential thing is that we're calling God the father, God, almighty God, we're calling him dad. That's 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 the essential thing, and it is a it is a daring thing to do because what that implies, and it needs there needs to be like a health, healthy understanding between that. When a lot of people are trying to put like you know the the objection like oh I had a bad father so I can't really see as God as father or like you know my father ruined the image of the father, I think that's nonsense, and I think we need to take that out of people's minds right away, and we shouldn't go down that path like oh well if you have a problem with you know father because you had a bad father, you know, Jesus is brother, and, you know, the Holy Spirit is your friend. I mean, we should recognize what they're saying, because, you know, they probably have a, a wound there. But God is above that. And the human father, if he's destroyed that, that's one thing. But God is above that. And the real sense of father, the real sense of, of what that implies, is um, it's probably the most beautiful thing about our faith. The most beautiful thing about our faith is that we can, we can call... Almighty God, Dad. And that needs to imply, that needs to raise up in us a whole bunch of, of sentiments and um, realities of what a dad is and what a dad does and who he is and to know that God himself, that's his, that's his most profound identity. He's the Father. And it's all about the Father. And it's all pointing towards the Father. And that's what Jesus came to do, was to show us the Father. And that's what the Holy Spirit does, is he repeats what Jesus said, which was saying he's all about the Father. It's all about Dad. It's what it's all about. Everything. Everything is about God being our Dad. And everything that it implies. It implies absolutely everything. And it's the, it's the little way of St. Therese. Because if you do have that concept, and if you do have that reality, and you live it, everything else is taken care of. Because he's, he's got everything under control. And that takes away useless worrying. It takes away scheming. It takes away our like perception. Perception is so important, like how we're perceiving reality. Because sometimes we can start like forming our own way of living reality. It came in the first reading as well. Like the Lord literally says, you're concerned over a plant when there's a, a city of 120,000 people that, uh, you know, they could make or break. Because like if they don't repent, they're gonna die. 
And it's not like God is waiting to destroy him and he's loving this opportunity to absolutely destroy him, which looks like Jonah was kind of like hoping that was going to happen. And he's having like this pouting party and he says, you're concerned over a plant while there's a city of 120,000 people there. You see, he's saying like your perception of reality right now is a plant. It's like your life consists of this plant that's giving you shade and it's like you're weeping because, you know, you wish you were dead. It's like, it's, it's the, Jonah is, um, it's a very he- a healthy prophet to read for us because it, it makes him like look like the bad guy. And that's what Peter Kreef says in his commentary. It's like the Catholic prophet because it's like, it's uh, like the, the bad guys come out as good. You know, you have the sailors, you have the Ninevites, and the good guy comes out as bad, quote unquote. It's like Jonah is in the wrong. Jonah's sitting there pouting because his idea, his perception was they had to be destroyed. And it was like, and, and God's teaching him a huge lesson. And it's important for us because like, that happens to us on a daily basis. As they say, you know, you drown in a glass of water when like something that you think is such a huge deal and a huge problem, it really isn't. And I think the root of it is, is that if forgetting, we're forgetting that he's dad and he's in charge. And we're losing the perception. We're losing how we're supposed to be living and perceiving reality. Because like from the beginning, of the day, like reality has to be perceived, uh, the Father, and where we come from, the Father, and we're going back to the Father through Christ. We're sons in the Father in the Son, through the Holy Spirit, who makes us sons in the Son of the Father. And it's a beautiful story there with Saint Francis, and with this we can end when Saint Francis and his brother, it's um, they were going back home, and they like took two different ways to go home, and. They kind of like made a thing there, like, oh, okay, whatever, whoever prays more, our fathers will just, you know, whatever, our, every hour father that we pray, like taking advantage of the journey, we'll throw a little pebble into our hoods. And when they made it back to the, the friary, like the brother showed him all the pebbles he had, all the our fathers he prayed, and Francis only had one pebble. And the brother was asking him, is it impossible that you just prayed one our father in this whole journey? And he says, well, look, I tried. I tried to pray the our fathers, but when I started with, when I got to father, our father, that was it. And his whole meditation on the whole way home was Father. And he didn't get past that. And I think that's beautiful because if that's if that's happening to us, all the other petitions, which are seven of them, will be fulfilled. And we're asking huge things from the Father. We're asking him huge things. Forgiveness, that we forgive others, that he frees us from evil, that he gives us our daily bread. It's like it's everything's packed in there. But if we stay with the Father and who he is, it all just comes. It's all consequence. Because that's what we're going to be living. We're going to be living in the Father. So we ask the grace to have this perception and this this reality really, really present with us that we dare to call Almighty God, Dad, and that it has repercussions in our lives. Amen.